Hello, I'm Victor. I'm a master's student at at the Shrand University, I'm also working at Exxon. I'm mainly creating checkers for Klangela VM, static analysis checkers, but I'm also building code generation and other languages as well. The data flow framework that got recently implemented into Klangela VM came at the exact right time to be my master's topic. So first, let's touch briefly on what data flow analysis is. Data flow analysis basically works to approximate the program state by basically attaching information to variables and values and expressions. The data flow analysis is basically made up of two functions, a transfer function, which is executed on every expression, transfers the state from a new state, and the merge function, basically when the control flow graph meets at some point, the merge function gets executed to merge it. And data flow analysis is an iterative method. Basically, it works by iteratively checking each node, executing all the transfer functions in all the control flow graph blocks, and then if the result did not change, then we know that we do not have to reevaluate the rest of the box. But we cannot really use any intermediate results from this data flow analysis, so we do need it to converge. And for that, the transfer function needs to be monotone. So if we get a stricter result, we cannot get a worse, basically, output of that. So data flow problems can be broadly separated into two classes. May problems and mass problems. May problems being that we only need to find one possible program pass that like we do, for example, a loop pointer reference. But for mass problems, for example, if we want to verify that it, we cannot do a null pointer ref reference at that point, we have to verify all possible execution paths. The class static analyzer has a symbolic executor engine, which is very good at doing these May analysis types. It, and it also keeps track of the control flow that uh, the for example, the if statements that we do, then the conditions to get there. But it's not suited for must analysis. And the result of that is that the, recently, a new data flow framework was implemented into the Clang Analysis Toolkit, which is being actively developed. It was implemented last year. Our goal with developing our own static analysis checker was that pointer null beta analysis, checking whether a pointer can be null or not. Class static analyzer is already has a couple of checkers, but our goal was, was a specific case. So the issue in this code snippet is that the pointer is dereferenced on 916. And then after that, of course, if the pointer is null, then the program caches. If the pointer is not null, then the program does not cache and it continues. So after that statement, we know that the pointer cannot be null. And if, if we already know that the pointer cannot be null, and then we still check it, that's an error prone pattern, and that signals that the mental model about the variable is not the same across these two points. So the data flow framework has two main ways to store data about certain values or certain expressions. One of them is a lattice that we can define. The lattice has basically alternatives to all of the transfer and merge functions. The transfer function basically maps a value in the lattice to another value in the lattice. And the merge function basically takes the lowest common ancestor between the two values. And that is the merge function usually. The other way is that we can store Boolean expressions that we can also attach to variables. And we can evaluate these conditions on any given program state that we have to so see if it's satisfies or not. And then we can use these values that whether it satisfies, whether the opposite of it satisfies, and we have a magical third value, which is whether whether given expression cannot be true nor false, because it's uncertain. Thing. And the data flow framework supports both approaches. So just to show the power of Boolean expressions or Boolean constraints, in this example, we can store the condition well, we can store the, we basically check the nullness of the pointer, and we can see that the pointer is null when the condition is true, and the pointer is not null when the condition is false. And with lattices, we, after, after we are exiting the if statement, we basically have one value that says the, we don't know about whether it's true or false, but with Boolean constraints, we know exactly whether it's true or false based on the condition we had earlier. And we can store this using the so-called flow condition token, which basically stores the precondition to any given program state. And then we can also add our own constraints to the flow condition token, 
so to give the post condition to a given token state. So basically, about briefly our checker, implementing the data flow analysis checker using the framework was very similar to implementing a clanked ID check. It only required implementing a data flow analysis class, which gives bindings to the transfer function, a merge function, and it also has a third binding for a branch transfer function, which basically checks whether for any statement, we choose the true branch or the false branch, and using that, we can also evaluate this if statement I mentioned earlier. And for tracking the values of pointers, we decided to go with storing two Boolean constraints for each pointer, whether the pointer is null, whether the pointer can be null, and whether the pointer can be not null. This allows us to represent states when, for example, with a function call, if we don't know anything about that certain function, the pointer written by it can be null and can be non-null as well, and it gives us a finer, finer structure to make represent this fact. And of course, if we don't know whether it's null or not, we can just give an uncertain value, and then using the flow condition, we can later add that. We can later say that we, it could be null at this point, but it also could be not null if we, for example, do a dereference on it. So you can encode various amounts of information into this Boolean condition. One of the ways is basically just emulating a lattice, a simple value storing true or false, or basically just an uncertain value. The main bottleneck here with the executing of the framework has been the number of Boolean values. It grows, and then the, that solves land the executor a tiny bit. Or we can go the more advanced way to encode extra conditions, like the ones I showed earlier, which is very good for storing more data and finding more cases but it also, the constraints grow very quickly, and that solves down the framework's execution speed. And we cannot really do anything about it because there's no way to get the signs of any given Boolean expression that we have yet. But the framework has a solution to this. The, basically, when we execute a node twice, a control flow graph node twice, for example, with loops, in the second round and the subsequent rounds after that, we get asked to widen the value that we have, which is basically just to make the data flow analysis converge faster, we lose a tiny bit of information. Well, by default, we forget all information if they are different. If they are the same, we keep them. But our first approach was that, of course, this loses a lot of information, so let's just keep all the information Check if the same expression, check if the expressions are the same, and if not, then just keep the new expression with a tiny bit of simplification. But this involved multiple calls to the solver, the Boolean constraint solver, the slow part, and each call was slow, and that's led to very long analysis times. And there also were a couple of infinite loops that we encountered when the Boolean values never became the same. So what we settled on in the end is preserving conditions when we know that each condition is true and or each condition is false. So in, in this case, not the constraints themselves were checked against each other, but the results of these constraints evaluated in the corner flow condition. And if, if they are true, both true or both false, they are kept, and otherwise they are deleted. And then, since we know that this Boolean expression, this convoluted Boolean expression evaluates the true, then we can just replace it with the value true. And that also keeps saves on execution speed. So a tiny bit of results on a C++ project that we evaluated. We did not find too many reports. I certainly not as many as I would have hoped for, but we did catch some reports. We also compared our different approaches to widening versus the default widening with mixed results. Implementing our own widening operator found more cases in our tests, but we did not get more reward reports because the significant performance hit basically made, made a lot more, increased the amount of timeouts or just hangs in the framework that executed. The most difficult part really was to get the data flow framework to terminate at all. And for that, we had to take certain shortcuts. So in some cases, intentionally invalid modeling of data, especially around struct values to get it to terminate. So the leading cause of the analysis Hanging, not even timing out, just hanging, can be traced back to the overly verbose Boolean constraints. 
So that is a, that is a limit on the amount of transfer and merge functions that we can execute. Uh, that's 4 million, I believe. But there's currently no limitation on how big a Boolean condition can get. And with more intricate conditions, it can very quickly lead to so too many variables and conditions that, or even the flow condition getting overly complex. Well, and since we need to evaluate this condition for some of our operators and the results, this can quickly lead to many minutes of analysis, even on smaller projects. So far, I've only talked about C++ projects. Uh, what about C code? Well, since the C11 standard C does have a Boolean data type, but for earlier versions of C, and for all intents and purposes in the offset syntax tree, Booleans are modeled as integers. And so when the framework tried to process the condition of an if statement as a Boolean, but it found an integer, it just crashes. A quick fix for that would be to keep the, track the nullness of the integer, similar to how we track the pointer values. And, but in the long term, there's an analog to a Boolean constraint solver called a satisfiability modulo theorem solver. That is basically the constraints for integer values as well. And the long term solution will be to implement an integer constraint solver. Well, the framework provided a diverse set of tools to help us develop our checker. The most recent one of those has been this HTML display that got merged a couple of weeks ago that can show the control flow graph. We can click on each element of each node of the control flow graph or even each statement in our program, and we can view all possible statements and all the, the environment before and after that. And that this has been immensely useful in developing, in debugging both our checker and the framework. One notable difficulty we had is, for example, is that while the variable, the big, big variables that we have uh, have values, for example, the structs and the pointers and integers and so on, but the Boolean constraints that we have have no information attached to them. So it's really difficult to see, for example, in a big constraint where each of the values came from. And in the future, there could be possibly something that we can attach to each Boolean condition to show where it came from. Well, in the future, well, we can, our checker currently only supports this reverse null pattern that I showed earlier. It can be expanded to a general purpose pointer nullability checker, finding cases where the pointer is always a null pointer. And the same concept could be also applied to different types of values, integers, tracking, for example, the size of arrays and aliasing properties of smart pointers and so on. And we had one, one other thing I can show about the, we, I can tell you about is that we have a couple of false positives related to assertions, which meant that basically we asserted that the pointer was not null, and after that, we still checked it, just in case the assertion was optimized out so the program doesn't cache. So we, in the future, we want to detect and handle these assertion-like cases. Basically, a lot of programs make their own types of assertions, which are not the default one. And for the framework, the, the framework currently only supports intra-procedural analysis, which is basically analyzing a single function. And in the future, we want to support inter-procedural analysis, maybe not globally, but we basically we bit in a single translation unit by attaching summaries to functions. And apart from the lack of timeouts and the performance issues, the server backend was pretty nice and it was very powerful. But if integration was possible, I'd, li I'd like to see a Z3 solver implementation and support for more data types, more fine-grained support for structs, and so on, and other data types. And just want to give a quick shout out to the stack here system at Ericsson who have mentored me to all of this. And thank you. Great. Do we have questions? Hi, thanks for the talk. Have you, I saw that you only found two reports across all the benchmarks you tested. Have you tried injecting manual bugs and see if your tool can find those bugs? Uh, we have our own test suit. Then we have a couple of cases of tests. We basically, 
on, we are checking if statements, we are checking loops, we are checking our own widening operator. It can, found, it can find all of those. But for C++, the use of row pointers are not really that common. So in C projects, we would find a lot more test cases I back on, but we, the, the framework does not support C yet. Thanks. Uh, hi. Uh, there is this fam famous case in the Linux kernel where uh, a few years back they had this problem that uh, they were the referencing kernel pointer, yep. and uh, then they checked to see if it's actually valid. Um, and they actually map, mapped that uh, null pointer in the memory space, so it was the referenceable. How do you treat this case in your framework? That is a great question. I'm not sure that is representable in the framework just yet, but that is something we can think about in the future. Thanks for telling me. Okay, thanks. Okay, I have a question. Um, so you showed the performance numbers that yes. things slow down. What would happen if you have a file that doesn't have a single null pointer check whatsoever? We just don't execute that file. We just keep every function that doesn't contain a pointer. So, so your framework is kind of already aware of the fact that it only has to look at things that actually have a null pointer check. Exactly. It only has to look at files that have pointers. Basically, we can check using the regular clang static analyzer and crack tidy tools whether a function contains a pointer, and then we can only execute if it does. Okay, that, that makes sense. And then um, you, you talked about you know the the pruning of your context because it grows out of bounds. Yep. Um, do you? I mean, given that this is kind of you know, there are not that many like actual positive results. So so it's something yep. that is kind of rare. Are you afraid that if you prune the stuff, you kind of lose exactly what you're looking for because this is a really rare win? Yeah, this is a really tricky subject because we have to keep just the right amount of information that the framework basically finishes in time, but still gives good results. Right. Okay. More questions? Then let's uh, thank the speaker one more time. Thank you.